Hi, I'm Marika. Welcome to My Creative Quilts. Do you like hand quilting? Is this something that you'd like to try but you've been a little bit intimidated? You don't need to be. Hand quilting is really quite easy. It just takes some practice and a few little tools, but not many, and you're good to go. What's great about hand quilting is it's portable, depending on the size of the quilt you're working on, of course, and it's fun. It gives you something to do while you're watching TV or you're chatting with family and friends. It's, I find hand quilting very relaxing, almost meditative in some ways. Um, my tips and tricks work for me. They might not work for you. They might not work for friends of yours. In my world, there's no quilt police. You do what works for you. So take some of the information I have and use it or toss it. It's, it's really up to you, but I like to think that my tips might help you find your own way when it comes to hand quilting. So first, um, I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use. First, I have this thimble. It's a plastic thimble and it has an opening. What I like about it is I find regular thimbles make my fingers sweat. I don't like how they feel. So I like this and it goes on my middle finger. And what's good about it as well is you can put it in a pot of boiling water for five minutes and then take it out and mold it to fit the size of your finger because I tend to get blisters easily. I have very sensitive skin and this just works for me. It's also good for people who have long nails, which I obviously don't. I also have something called an under thimble. This is what I call the receiving finger. When you're quilting, your needle is going through the three layers and then coming back up again. They need to meet something so that you know you've gone through all three. When I'm quilting for five, 10 minutes, a quick little stop, I don't care. But I'm kind of an aggressive quilter, I'm very fast, and uh, my finger can get very sore and very raw. So this has a two-sided tape on it. You put it on there, and then when you're quilting, your needle hits this instead of your finger. Some people like to use Band-Aids. Um, they have other techniques. I've seen some people use spoons. They hold spoons underneath. Whatever works for you, go for it. These are the needles, John James, that I prefer to use. I will use just about any needle there is as long as I can thread it properly. Uh, this is a size 10. Other people have pre other preferred needles, but these are the ones I like. The one thing to watch out for is if you're using a hard stop for your needle, this they can blunt more quickly than if you're just using your finger. Choice is yours. I do have this. I don't need it for the John James needles, but it's a needle threader. I have a few of them lying around the house. I find them very helpful as well. And I'm using 100% cotton thread. I don't know the, the make of it. I bought it a while ago, but I'll use all different kinds. It really depends on what catches my eye. For example, you can see this one's almost finished. I've used it a lot. It's a YL, YLI quilting thread. And um, it's been put in a lot of quilts. So that's pretty well all you need. You need your thread, your needle, something to protect your fingers, and your project. So this is my project. It's a machine applique sampler quilt of sorts, and I basted it. I love quilting. Quilting is really great. I adore it. Um, I hate basting with a passion. So now that I have my long arm machine, I'm in heaven. I don't have to baste anymore. It's great. Anyway, I basted it, and then to stabilize it, I began hand quilting all along my big seams and then I went around and I hand quilted all of the appliques. So I did keep um, safety pins along the edges to make sure that they stayed down. But now that I've done that, it's ready to go. I'm doing it by eye. Um, I'm just echo quilting around the different shapes, but uh, otherwise it's really however I feel like doing it. Now you may have noticed I don't have a frame. I don't have a hoop. That's on purpose. When I first started hand quilting, I had a um, round, you know, the round, they look like big embroidery hoops. I had it on a stand and you could also take it off and put it on your lap. It was good, but then I tried the, what came, uh, came out were the rectangle PVC frames. They're really quite big, but I liked that too. It was very handy, I liked it. I moved to the Grace hoop after. It was a big a square, a black square on a wooden frame from Grace Company like that a lot too. But then we moved from my really big house with my really big living room to this much smaller place and the hoop was just overwhelming the room. I, it's, there was no doubt about it. I had read that some experienced quilters don't even use hoops. They just use, they just let the uh, quilt sit in their lap. So I said, okay, I'll try it. Won't hurt. And you know what, it worked. The weight of the quilt gives you the tension that you need in order to make good stitches. So 
it's up to you whether you use a quilt or a hoop or not. Now I'm going to lower the camera a little bit, so please forgive the um, bumping, but I'm just doing this so you can see the quilting a little bit better. Okay, so there's several important things to remember when it comes to hand quilting. Oops, I'm caught there. First, do not cut your thread too long. It's very tempting to whip off a big long piece of thread, but there's a few reasons why this isn't good. One is ergonomics. If you're quilting with a long piece of thread, you're going to be doing this with your arm. That's going to get really sore after a while. So don't do that. Um, the other thing is it gets tangled very easily and that's very frustrating. So I've read some people like to do from their hand to their elbow. I just guess. Okay. So I've made a knot on the end. There are quilters knots. There are some people who have special knots that they like to use. I just tie a knot. I don't really care. I just want to bury my thread and make sure it stays there. So don't forget, this is what I call my receiving finger. So you put your hand underneath the quilt. You find the spot where you want to start, which for me is going to be right here. You take your needle about an inch or so away from where you want the stitch to come out. You put your needle in being careful not to go through all three layers. So you don't want it to show in the back. Um, I put it through the batting. Some people don't. I put it through the batting. So it's through the top layer. It's through the batting. Now you can see it's popping out a little bit there. So then you take it and you very gently go to the end. Okay. You see the, there's the knot there and then you give it just a little tug, just a little and it's in. Okay. So then, you just take a tiny stitch. I usually just do one to start and you're going to feel it hit your receiving finger and then you pull it up. You rock it in. There you go. You pull gently. Don't pull hard because you're going to pull the needle right through. You're going to pull the thread through. So then you start and you continue. You put in just a little bit past the where the needle came out. So if you can see that, you go back in, you rock, you go back out and then, but you don't pull it you put it back in again and you come back out again and you put it back in again and this is what it's going to look like. There's three stitches that I took right there. Can you see them? It's hard with this camera. There we go. There's the three stitches. Usually I do a lot more and then you pull it and you just pull it snug. Don't pull it too tight. Okay. And then you do it again, down and up, down, and up. I try to get four or five stitches on my needle, but because I'm showing you, of course, it's not working, right? Isn't that always the way you go to the dentist and your tooth stop hurting? There we go. Okay. That's how you, that's just how you do it. And you just pull it, don't pull it tight, tight. Cause then you're going to start getting puckers. You just want it snug. Now to finish it off. Okay. You just make a knot like you did to put the needle in. I just do a simple little knot like that, okay? About a half a centimeter above the fabric. Then you put your needle in and push it away about an inch, at least an inch. Sometimes I'll go a bit farther. So you can see the needles coming out. Pull gently till you get to the knot. Oh, a little bit of fluff in there, okay? And then give it a little tug. There, it's buried, that's it. And then you cut it off. Now you're going to see I have a different way of cutting. I don't snip. Okay. I don't snip for a good reason. I've snipped fabric by accident. Okay. What you do, what I do is I pull it taut. I give it a little nudge by pulling it taut. As soon as the thread is cut, what's left behind will bury itself back into the batting. And then you have your leftover thread. These are really cheap scissors that I bought at a local store. They were only $3.99, $4.99, something like that. I like them so much I went and bought four more for if I ever break or lose these. I just really like them. I, I was using regular scissors before, nice thread snipper the scissors, but there's something about these that I just really like. So as you can see, hand quilting is really not complicated. It's just set yourself up. I like, this is my living room, as you can see. I like to sit, I put, this is a reclining couch. I put my feet up. I turn the TV on, I watch a movie. Last night my husband and I watched Outlander while I was sitting here quilting. And I just find it very soothing, very relaxing, and it gives you a different look 
from the machine quilts. I had been hand quilting for probably about 13, 14 years before I started machine quilting. At the time, I thought that was the only thing I would ever do. The problem is it takes a long time to do a hand quilt. I love hand quilting, but it takes a long time. So, you know, I like to have one, like I said, I like to have one going. I like to have my machine quilting going and I can do whatever I feel like doing. And you can do big projects, you can do small projects. And there's something extremely satisfying when you're finished a hand quilt. It just, there's just something about it that I really like. So I hope you've taken away some good tips from here. If you have any tips to give me, I'd love to hear them because I'm always willing to learn more. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.